Hi everyone. Welcome to our weekly video. We're really making an earnest attempt in providing you with content once a week. One of the things that we thought would be fun would be colorful things that can express either your quirkiness or things that talk to you. Uh, and so I'll tell you in the beginning, my business started because of costume jewelry. Costume jewelry became a wonderful alternative to people that didn't have the budget to buy higher priced items. And designers such as Chanel, for example, all of the big designers pretty much carry a line of alternative to their ultra, ultra, ultra expensive a real deal jewelry. So we pulled a selection of costume jewelry primarily from the 80s and 90s, almost as an extension of our nanny episode. And also because the 90s have been really making a strong comeback for a few years now. Chanel started designing costume jewelry in 1930, I believe. It started with the Maltese cross, which is something that continues to this day. And when you think about the importance of costume jewelry in 1930, the Depression hit the world, and people really couldn't afford to spend money on expensive things. So even with costume jewelry, just generic costume jewelry in the United States, jewelry makers came up with ways to simulate the real deal. So they would rhodium plate uh, pop metal so it looked like platinum and uh, crystals obviously replaced diamonds. So a lot of these pieces from the Depression era survive today on our great references to what happened uh, at that moment in history. Moving a little bit forward in time, we have mostly items from the 80s and 90s on this table. We have a few pieces that are from Chanel, and you can see simulated Moby Pearl with uh, faux gold. Chanel collaborated with uh, quite a few designers in, in the jewelry world, but after her death in 1971, Robert Goussaint started to do her jewelry collection. And Goussaint did jewelry for a lot of the runway pieces for major designers like YSL, and he utilized fantastic material. One of my all-time favorite jewelry designers from the 80s, 90s is Lunch at the Ritz. And the reason is because whenever I see their pieces, I always smile. They're, oh, they always infuse either a subtle element of whimsy or completely over the top. And why I love them as designers is they don't really care what's trending. They're about what talks to them. So a great example of Lunch at the Ritz are these grape earrings which articulate and then this which is on its original card which is Texas and it's the the name of this one is called Texas Tea. They are and have been extremely popular and collectible. If you look at their pieces they're beautifully made uh, with enamel and pronged rhinestones and then another one of my favorite 80s designers is uh, Wendy Gale. Wendy Gale veers into the area of outrageous. She uh, used a lot of found pieces, like vintage pieces, and she would use a hot glue gun and create an explosion of color and texture. Wendy Gell was a favorite of a lot of celebrities in the 80s, from Elizabeth Taylor to Tammy Faye Baker. She was really smart because she got a licensing deal with Walt Disney and was able to use um, a lot of the Disney characters. If you like Goofy, if you like Mickey Mouse, you'll find some of her, her pieces with those characters. And they're definitely statement pieces. Another 80s icon that wore Wendy Gell is and was Dolly Parton. And you know when someone wears her pieces that they don't take themselves too seriously. And they don't take to heart criticism. I love that, you know, be unique 
and, and don't be afraid to express yourself with things that talk to you. You want to always look at the materials that they use because there are ways to create an impact using less expensive, cheaper quality. But if you look at how something is created, like for example, this layered lucite earring and brooch set, you can see that they literally layer different colors. It's not like a veneer. So that makes it a better quality because veneers can peel off. If you look at the crystals that are utilized or the glass or how something is set, if it's glue or prong set. With Wendy Gell, I'll make an exception because here we are 40 years later and her hot glue still is working. That's pretty, pretty incredible. The 80s and 90s are relevant today. People are really excited to include elements from those time periods, especially costume jewelry. And a lot of that has to do with some of the extremely successful television shows like GLOW. Being here in LA, we are blessed and lucky to have Beth Morgan, who was the costume designer for that show, come in numerous times to get clothing, but also get accessories. She actually got a lot of Lunch at the Ritz from us. Um, her response to Lunch at the Ritz is similar to mine, so you gotta love her. But then look at uh, today's icons like Cardi B. We've gone from a minimalist kind of presentation to a maximalist. You layer it on, like how much is too much. So if you're not in the United States, but you're overseas, another iconic 80s, 90s costume jewelry company is Butler & Wilson. They were a favorite of Princess Diana, and a lot of the pieces that they made were humongous. So if you'd want to wear like a lizard from your throat down to your belly button, they're the company to go to. And you think about also uh, people like Elizabeth Taylor. When the costume jewelry got to be uh, to a certain point, Chanel was definitely instrumental in creating a mixture of costume with real jewelry. She would actually make costume jewelry with fake pearls and gold. And it was a great way for people to wear more precious items without the fear of being robbed. For those of you that are getting into vintage to begin with, uh, for yourself or for business, my first recommendation is to invest in a loop because there are hidden surprises in the back. Uh, and you may end up buying something that you had no idea was let's say, real gold. Do your homework because there are ways, for example, um, 18 karat gold would be marked 750, which means it's 75% pure gold. 14 karat would be marked 585. So there are clues that let you know what it is you're holding in your hand. So a loop is a really valuable tool to, to be able to assess whether you found a treasure or just something fun. My business started out with one ring that was from the 1920s and it was Egyptian Revival. And here we are almost uh, 50 years later and <laughs> I'll let my business speak for itself. I'm gonna say in closing if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments or DM us on Instagram or email us and subscribe because we are really making an effort to put out content once a week. We will make every effort to have these items photographed and put online. So if you're curious about value or if you are really attracted to something, you can purchase it. We're grateful for your interest and your attention. We hope you are all healthy and safe, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.